Today we're gonna be using the free add-on Cell Fracture to break any type of object in Blender. Let's do it! <laughs> All right, so this is the Blender project for the animation that you just saw. I'm using Blender Cycles for this, but obviously for preview purposes, we're not gonna be viewing it like that. So there's a few components to this animation. The most important part of this animation is this simulation of the Premiere Pro box breaking. So the first thing you have to do with this scene is decide how it's gonna go and, and what you wanna do with it. I did some experimenting beforehand and this is the animation I ended up with. Then I had to add the textures of the two objects, but that was kind of straightforward. All I really did was use the, the logo as an image texture and combine like glossy and emission to get this glowy looking vibe. We're gonna focus mainly on the collision and the breaking simulation. So we're gonna open a new file and we're gonna add some basic things here. We're gonna add a floor. There we go. Easy as that. And then I, I used a cube for my collision but you can use this on basically any object. For this instance I'm gonna use a cube. For some reason I don't know exactly why but Blender has a problem running simulations on small sizes. So regardless the final size of your object I recommend enlarging your object to a bigger scale before doing it and then you can always lower the size afterwards. So we have this cube here I'm gonna make it uh, three meters in all dimensions. There we go. I'm just gonna move this up and increase the size of our floor here. All right, so this is kind of everything we need to get started. And like I said, the materials are really important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two material slots. And the first one, we're gonna name that inside. And that's gonna be the material that's gonna be on the inside of our cube. And then we're gonna add another one and we're gonna call that outside. And that's basically the material that you see before it breaks. Kind of self-explanatory, but you know. So once we have these two material slots, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the outside. I'm gonna make that white gonna make it a little bit reflective and then we're gonna do the inside and that's gonna be dark just so that it's really easy to see what happened and basically what I did for my animation was I made the inside an emission so that it got this glow effect once it's broke down. Once we've done that we're ready to hop into the add-on and you might need to activate the add-on first so you simply go to the preferences and then add-ons and then search for cell fracture and then just enable it right there. Once you've done that, all you need to do is press F3, search for cell fracture, and you're gonna see object, quick effects, cell fracture. Press enter. So this is the interface for the add-on. There's just a few things we need to change here. We need to change it to own verts from own particles. I just think that's better. An important thing here is under mesh data, there's the material. We need to change that to one. And that's basically to make sure it fetches the right material for the inside and the outside. We have noise, which is basically just a seed generator for randomizing the breaking of the parts. And then we have source limit, which is how many different parts it's gonna be. But we're gonna leave that at 100 to start with, and then we're just gonna press OK. All right, so what we see here immediately is that it looks like it only broke into four pieces. So what we wanna do is we wanna undo, go into edit mode, add some more geometry by subdividing it. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna subdivide it by 10. Once we've done that, we can repeat the process. We press F3, go into cell fracture, and our settings should have saved, but let's just double check. Yes, they have saved. So let's just press OK again. All right, now you can see it's working a little bit better. All right, and if we look over here in our layers, we can see that it's created 100 different parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click, create a new collection. Let's see. I think it ended up at the bottom here, yeah. And then I'm just gonna drag all of the new parts in there while they're already selected. It's nice to have that done. You can easily hide that. And we're just gonna name it cell parts. Then we have our original cube here still. I'm gonna rename that to original cube. And we can just hide that for now. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add a simple rigid body simulation to see if it's working as intended. So simply right click on your collection click select objects then go to object tab go down to rigid body add active there we go all right let's play it and see what happens all right so it just falls through the ground which which is good that's what we wanted to fix this we simply select our floor layer and then we go to object rigid body add passive now if we do the same thing again we should see that it's in interaction with the simulation, which is perfect. Now there's a few things that we might want to change here. So if we go into our scenes tab here and down to rigid body world, we got the speed value. That's how fast it will simulate. For example, if you want to do it in slow motion, you lower the speed. And if you want to make it go faster, yeah, 
self-explanatory, but you increase the speed. <laughs> so let's just, uh, I'll just put it to 1.5 to show you what I mean. If we play it, it's a little bit faster. And for example, if we do 0.5, it's gonna be a bit slower. So that's perfect if you wanna do something in slow motion. And this is one of the values that we might wanna tweak later once we have everything in place. One thing you might not like about this is that it's it's pretty big pieces. We might want to have more pieces. And to do that, we wanna redo the whole cell fracture process. So I'm simply gonna delete all the parts. Then we're gonna go back to our original cube. And then, yeah, we're just gonna redo it. So F3, cell fracture. Then I'm gonna try increasing the source limit. And what I did for my animation was 500. Let's just do that here as well. We'll press okay. Now this will take some more computer power. So make sure you save your project before trying to increase the source limit because it might crash be careful that's all i can say all right there we go it worked so i'm gonna do the same thing again create a new collection drag them all in there rename it to cell parts i'm gonna hide the original cube um select all objects in the collection go to object rigid body add active now let's see if it works Whoa, sir. I don't know why exactly, but for some reason when I increase the source limit, it goes absolutely crazy. I don't know if it's because it's interacting with each other more or what it's about. We got an explosion, all right. At this point might be where we want to try to tweak it a little bit. So we got the speed here. I'm going to put that back to one, but we also have another tab up here called gravity. And these two values are kind of the, the values that I used to experiment and tweak it until I got it to look like what I wanted it to look like. If we want to increase the gravity, we want a lower number. So I'm just going to try adding minus 100 here and we'll see what happens. All right, so now we can see it's, it's still exploding, but it's looking a lot better already. What I do feel though, it's moving, it's moving pretty fast. So what if we bring the speed down? For some reason, I don't know exactly why, but these two values seem to be connected. So you're just gonna have to do some tweaking until you get a result that you like. Let's see what we have then. So I'm happy with that for now. Now we're missing an important player here. It's the Da Vinci wheel rolling into the cube, making it explode. So I'm just gonna add a simple cylinder. And I'm gonna move it up, resize it, rotate it. I think something like that is good. So in order to keep this tutorial as short as possible, I'm not gonna go into rotating it. I think that's pretty straightforward. I'm simply gonna make it move into the box and making it explode. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm at the start of the timeline here. And with my coin or whatever selected, I'm gonna press I and choose a location keyframe. And that's gonna add a location keyframe down here. Then I'm just gonna move the marker a bit here and we'll just move it to the other side of our box. Press I again and add another keyframe. So now if we play it back, we're gonna see that it's moving from one side to the other. It's moving a bit slow, so I'm just gonna move the, the keyframes here a bit to make it a bit faster. All right, now we have one big problem and that is the fact that the box is exploding at the start. To fix this, what we wanna do is we will select one of the parts and then we'll right click the collection and select all objects. And what we wanna do here is we wanna go down to dynamics. We have a tab here called deactivation. And to ensure that we're making changes to all of the selected objects, we'll hold down alt and we'll click deactivation and also start deactivated. Now, hopefully if we play it back, it doesn't work. <laughs> so I actually had this problem before and I solved it by removing the rigid world and then adding it again. I don't know why this is happening. I'm guessing it's some kind of uh, simulation cache, but I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna quickly remove rigid body world and I'll just re-add it and see if that works. So we go to objects, rigid body, add active. We select the ground, object, rigid body, add passive. We select one of the parts click select objects to select all we go down to the physics tab we hold down alt and click deactivation start deactivated and let's see if it works now yes it works perfect so now it's not exploding at all we want to make the little coin here trigger the explosion to do this we'll select our coin and we'll go to object rigid body add active over in the physics tab we'll activate animated let's play it back and we'll see if it works okay it works perfect so it seems like we lost some of that explosion drama. I don't know why. I guess it's because our scene settings were reset. I don't remember exactly what my settings were. It seems like the gravity is still the same, but the speed is different. So we'll, we'll tweak it a little bit until we get a result that we like. That, that looks, that's looking satisfying though, I'll say that. Let's try and reset the gravity and see what happens. All right. 
Okay, yeah, that that's pretty nice. That's that's pretty nice. So yeah, let's let's switch over to the texture tab to see how it looks. Boom, and yeah, we got the white insides. That's nice, that's nice. All right, so another thing that you might have noticed is that it's already broken from the start. There's a simple fix for this because we still have our original cube. What I did, I go to the point where it interacts which is here, up until this frame, we want it to be intact. We have our original cube here. So I simply increase the size a little bit, just so to make sure it's on the outside of the broken one, like that, because now it looks good. We want the original cube to be shown until the impact, and then we want it to be hidden. Now we're at the last frame where we want it to be visible. We head over to our layers here, and while hovering over the, the render icon, we simply press I to insert a keyframe there. And then if we go to the next frame, that's where we want it to be hidden. We simply hide it and then press I while hovering. Now that was only for the rendered, so it's not gonna show in the viewport. Just to illustrate what it's looking like, let's do the same thing to the hiding viewport. So we go to the first frame. Oh yeah, we can't animate that, but we can animate disabling viewport. So let's do that. So we go to the first frame, we insert keyframe over the disabling viewport. Go to the next frame, disable it and press I. There we go. Now if we preview it, we should get the same as the rendered result. Perfect. Some other things you might want to tweak is the, the friction of the ground floor. Under the physics tab down in the surface response, you can change the friction of the ground if you want to control how much the parts slide on the floor. All right, yeah, I think that's everything you need to know to get started with the cell fracture add-on. It's a really cool add-on and uh, I think you can get creative with it. So yeah, just start experimenting. I wasn't gonna make this tutorial because it felt a little bit underwhelming, but I hope you enjoyed and shout out to Atharv and Eric Davis for uh, pushing me to do it. It. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.